In this video, I give you my thoughts on Pathcraft, which is a VR puzzle platformer for the MetaQuest 2 and MetaQuest Pro. This quirky, colourful puzzle game is developed by Devocal Studios and published by Vertigo Games. In this game, you guide a young boy across a series of platforms to complete each level by collecting all of the power cells within. Now that sounds simple enough, except you don't have direct control over the child. Instead, he will march mindlessly in a straight line and will only turn or jump when there's an obstacle in his way. That means you have to guide him through by creating a tailored path using strategically placed blocks. This is a familiar puzzle mechanic with a style that's reminiscent of the classic puzzle game Lemmings. Now, according to the press release, Pathcraft will cost $14.99 US dollars, but in the first two weeks after launch, is available at a discounted price of $11.99. So if you are interested in this game, then you'll save a bit of money getting it within the first two weeks. There's 80 levels to complete as well as a level editor. I've completed all the levels now, so in this video I'm going to show you what I think of the game after I spent about seven hours completing the single player campaign. I also have a full in-depth written review over on Upload VR, which will be made available at around the same time the game is released. So if you're looking for a more in-depth review, make sure you check out that review article. I'll link it in the description below. So we're inside this cutesy kid's bedroom here, and right now I'm looking pretty huge. And that's because I've got it set to seated mode. So if I change that to standing, that's a lot better. Uh, looking at the options, there's nothing really spectacular here. Music, sound effects, language, as well as a few save slots. That's about it. Um, we have the actual game itself, as well as the level editor, which I'll show you a bit later, and cosmetics. Now, I've actually completed the entire game. My review is going to be up on Upload VR. Uh, sometime very shortly I'll link it down in the comment section below and the description but as you can see I've uh, played all the different levels and earned these little uh, yellow circles they're coins I've earned three coins on some of them so the better you do the more coins you earn as you can probably guess uh, each uh, set of 20 levels has a different environment here's the underwater one then there's this uh, space themed environment up to level 80 so this isn't a first impression as much as a last impression as I want to show you a bit about this game what I've learned so far and pretty much what I think of it so let's jump into one of the earlier levels so I can show you the give you the gist of what to expect in this game so here we have a, a little child if you like I don't even know his name there's no backstory whatsoever to this game and essentially you have to build a path for him to get these power cells why I don't know but you get them, you complete the level. So that's what you want to do. You can drag yourself around like this using the uh, grip buttons. Can't rotate the camera for some reason. I don't know why. So you kind of just have to do this with your head to move yourself around. Now, uh, I grab these blocks and I place them where there are gaps. And there we go. Now, obviously, that's a very simple level. It does get a lot more complicated than that. But I get three coins because I've done it in three moves. And... Uh, now let's try a more difficult level to show you how complicated it can actually get. See, so I'm jumping into one of the underwater stages. Let's try stage 45. I've actually got no coins on this one, so I'm assuming it's a quite a challenging one. Now you can see there's new obstacles here. These these uh, automatic firing cannons, as well as this little switch which activates blocks. Um, so you can see how complicated it actually can get when all these elements are tied together so if I press this switch you can see what it does it turns on these blocks here turns off that one um, now this cannon this does not rotate so how am I going to block this seeing as I have nothing to block the line of fire that's going to be an interesting question right I think I know what to do here so I press this again let's trap him inside there now he's going to press that switch a few times that's going to cause the cannon to rotate. When it rotates to here, the bullets will cancel each other out. That's the theory. Let's give it a try. There we go. Fantastic. So the puzzles are pretty clever in the ways you have to figure them out. Let's try another stage. I'll show you the space theme. So each has its own kind of theme. This is the space one. It's kind of like a cardboard cutout diorama with childlike drawings. Well, I say childlike drawings, I probably couldn't draw much better than that myself. Okay, so here we got a new item. These are death blocks. You touch them, you die. Pretty straightforward. 
Um, we have a gap down here. You have to plan your moves pretty meticulously so you know where you're going to go. But it's always very easy to stuff something up. We've got three cannons here. If I zoom out, three cannons. And these blocks actually break with a few hits. So we're not going to be able to use them for very long to block those cannons. So let's step over here. Let's see if I'm going to get hit by it. Yes. There we are. And the game will trick you in certain ways. Because if I take that block away, I hit that death block. And that's it. Game over. So you really have to think about every single move you make. So let me take that. Pop that there now. Take that away. Pop that there. Take that away. Pop this here. Brilliant. And my blocks are still intact. So I can use them for walking on. He presses that switch. That's not the game finished. So those uh, cannons do rotate out the way. But I've still got one. That would possibly smack me if I don't. And I've still got one or well, two blocks intact actually. Get that final power cell. Job done. Now I'll show you one more stage. This is a uh, city type stage. Now let's do stage 26. Why not? Okay, oh, here we have, it's actually quite a good stage to show you because we have sand blocks here. Now they fall whenever you walk over them. So that makes the return journey a lot more difficult. Now let's figure out what we've got to do here. We've got a switch that turns on that uh, and a power cell over there. We've got two power, or oh, three power cells actually to collect. So I walk over here. Hmm. How do I? Okay, so a sand block will fall down, hit that button, turn that block on. I will turn right here, pick up this power cell. All right, and let's go from there. So let's, um, let's just pull that out there. Ah, didn't work as I planned. That turned off for some reason. All right, so why it turned off again, I have no idea. But maybe if we delay the falling of this sand block, we can actually get that to turn on when we want it to. So I'll put that under there. Pull it away. Turns on. Perfect. There we go. Now he collects that power cell. Now I'm just going to put that there. So he bounces between these two walls while we figure out what to do next. Uh, if I click this on, he will turn down this staircase. All right, that's a pretty simple one. And I've got to make sure I also plug that gap as he walks up. Right. Ready. Pop that in there. Put that there so he doesn't walk off that edge because he will step up and off the edge. He does not think for himself one little bit. So he'll make the dumbest of moves if you don't direct him correctly. Okay. Well, it seems like I might actually be stuck here because I have to get this power cell. Which means I have to turn these blocks on and somehow get past this block. But I can't because it's jammed on. Uh, unless I kind of somehow step over it. Which is uh, looking like that might not be possible. But let's try a different strategy here. Maybe if we get to this power cell first. That's the trick. Alright, so I jam this under here. He will uh, walk across here like that. That will... Ah, damn it. So, I have to uh, make sure that button is not pressed. Let's pop that there. Quickly take the block, put it up there. That's that's the thing. This this game's not just about finding the right path, but also being really quick and accurate with flicking switches and placing blocks like that. <sighs> really, you have to think two or three steps ahead in order to be successful. So you notice I've got some coins in those levels. Before we go into the level editor, I'll show you, you go into this uh, cosmetic section and you not only get to customize your character, all of these customization options here are free. Uh, you can change the skin color and um, the pajamas and that kind of stuff. But there's the costumes and these cost a bit of money. Now you can see I've got a ton of coins, but I've actually bought all of the costumes available. So collecting coins actually comes a bit redundant at some point. But it is, uh, it's pretty cool to be able to dress up your character in the different uh, various cardboard costumes that are available. And it gives you some incentive to actually go back and complete the levels and get full three coins for each of them. Now, if we go into the editor, 
I'll show you how that works just briefly. We've got a few uh, save slots here. It's pretty simple, really easy drag and drop interface like that. I place my blocks like here. Now, the one annoying thing I have about this is that you try and place a single block, you think you might just click the trigger, but no, it doesn't work. You have to click it and kind of slightly drag it and then it appears. It doesn't really make much sense if you're placing a single block. You expect just to click the trigger, trigger, not have to kind of drag it at the same time. It's a small complaint, so it's nothing uh, major, but that's pretty much how you create a level. You just place your blocks, and you can see you've got all the different block types here, as well as um, something you haven't seen, the teleporter. And I'll show you how it uh, works as well with that. You kind of click this image here, and you can link it up there. And that's how that teleport you go in that end, you come out that end. And you can do that kind of thing also with the other things, like the switches make blocks appear and disappear with the uh, flick of a switch. If I can select switch, so select the block, and then uh, again you collect, cl click on that, connect it up like that, and there we go, when we click that switch, that block will turn on and off. And that's the editor. I mean, using these very simple blocks and this drag and drop interface, you can make some pretty awesome puzzles. Now, one thing which I think is a bug is that this is a puzzle I saved earlier. Unfortunately, it places me outside the play space. I can't drag myself closer. So I'm sure that's a bug that they'll probably fix um, before launch, if not shortly after. But I'll show you this level that I created just to uh, show you how it works, basically. So this is a very, very basic level I created. It took me like a couple of minutes just to put together, just to show you. So we step on that sand block, which will activate that switch, turn on this block here. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna make sure to cover the cannon fighter so it doesn't get shot. And there you go, you've got the power saw. Now with the editor, you can also browse for other people's levels. You can upload levels that you've created to the internet and play other people's levels that have been uploaded too. Um, there's a couple here, let's give it a try. They seem to have a rating too. So here we have something that someone has created from the level editor. I'm just gonna block his path there. Uh, I'm not sure how to solve it just yet. You probably have to use these crates uh, down here to pick up the power cells. But look, the level editor is there for a little bit of extra content. If you don't get enough from the main game, you can uh, jump into the level editor, play other people's creations even. As to the quality, of other people's levels where it's going to be a mixed bag but I'm sure you'll find some decent puzzles in there to play as well let's try this one so that's a bit it for Pathcraft really it's a um, it's a cute looking game but don't let that fool you because it can get quite challenging particularly in the later stages uh, it relies not only on crafting out your path but also being really quick with placing these blocks as you often have to, you know, reuse them time and time again because you don't have an unlimited number to, to plant around the place. The, the puzzle design is quite good. It took me about seven hours to complete all 80 stages. And, like I say, there's more with the level editor if you fancy taking that on. It's pretty simple. There's no story, like I say. It's just a series of puzzles. So it's not like some other puzzle games you might be aware of, like A Fisherman's Tower, which has a kind of rich narrative. Um, you don't get no story here. But if you're after puzzles that are going to kind of test your grey matter, give your brain a bit of a workout, then Pathcraft is quite a good one. I think it's good for not only more experienced VR players, but uh, players of all ages really, and particularly VR newcomers too, because it's quite a comfortable experience. <laughs> And just a couple of small things I didn't show in the gameplay video, and that's these additional robot characters which are present in some of the levels and act just like the kid. That means they can pick up power cells, push buttons, and you need to guide them in the same way. And they also need to be kept alive. So when there are one or more of these robots in the level, that can make things a whole lot more interesting. Also, the game does have hand tracking, but the controllers were by far the better way of playing for me, as uh, hand tracking didn't seem to keep up too well with the fast-paced gameplay. And if you liked today's video, a thumbs up, a comment and subscription are always appreciated. But uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.